Finance Live. I'm Julie Hyman. We have been talking and tracking, talking about and tracking all of the various companies that have been either repurposing their operations to make things for the uh, coronavirus effort or otherwise. Now we're going to talk about one individual at a company who's doing something. That's Jack Dorsey of Twitter. He's pledged a billion dollars of his stake in Square, the other company of which he's CEO, in order to help this effort. Melody Hahn has been uh, following this for us. So um, what's the structure of this donation? Where is it going? Tell us all about it. Yeah, Julie. So that's about 20% of his net worth. Uh, and as you mentioned, he's the chief executive of both Square and Twitter. And in an effort to make it a transparent process, he started a Google Doc in the same way that we're sharing ideas uh, to make a log of all of the contributions he's made. To date, he's only made one of $100,000 to America's Food Fund, which provides meals to the vulnerable and a lot of children who previously have relied on schools to give them their meals. Um, the the GoFundMe fundraiser was only started six days ago, and they've already raised $13.4 million from the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio, Lorene Powell Jobs. So, of course, it's a cohort of really illustrious tech folks who are kind of banding together here. But I have to say, this is notable. We tend to take a cynical look uh, when we say, oh, Jeff Bezos is 1% net worth and Mark Zuckerberg's 5% of his net worth. 28% of someone's net worth uh, is a significant chunk right here. And I think what I find particularly interesting and in writing a piece on this is about his note in his tweet saying that he wants to support causes like universal basic income. As we know, that was presidential candidate at the time, Andrew Yang's central campaign tenant. A lot of people rolled their eyes at it saying, how would you be able to come up with two to four trillion dollars to give every American a check for $1,000. Does that sound familiar at this moment in time? Uh, so it's very fascinating to see lawmakers from both sides, whether it's the people like Mitt Romney or Ro Khanna, basically coming up with that argument saying, hey, in addition to that $1,200 check for people who make $75,000 or less, every American, in order to stay afloat, in order to really reignite a lot of economic activity, even from their homes, they should be given a little bit more income. Of course, this is something that has its fair share of critics, has not fared well in places like Finland. There's a pilot program happening all across California right now through Y Combinator. And there, you know, the results are mixed, where, of course, people are not actually dedicated dedicating those uh, resources to drugs and alcohol, which is what some of the most fervent critics say. But at the same time, does it actually, um, you know, provide that that balanced income that Andrew Yang perspective was specifically in order to mitigate automation? Of course, we could have never perceived a pandemic to be the real black swan here. Um, and the last point I want to make is. I think overall, when you think about the landscape of technology, it's so fascinating and sort of ironic that some of the tech leaders are the ones who are the most vocal for UBI. So Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Jack Dorsey, they are very uh, huge proponents, perhaps because they see it right in front of their eyes, that they are relying on automation. Uh, so this is something that I think will get reignited more and more, even outside of the pandemic conversation. Hey, Mel, it's Rick. Uh, so they're, uh, they're, the, those tech executives calling for UBI are basically saying the government should uh, do more to help people. Uh, I would, it'd be interesting if somebody like Jack, like Jack Dorsey actually said, I'm giving a lot of money here and I'm calling on my fellow uh, billionaires and tech entrepreneurs to also give money, kind of like the giving pledge. Um, yes, any, exactly. Any, any and talk about something like that happening? Yeah, well, we saw even Howard Schultz, right? The Starbucks uh, previous, or honorary founder, you could say, who is giving those checks to Seattle workers. So I think to a certain extent, they're galvanizing within their own communities. And yes, oftentimes UBI became a cocktail hour uh, reception conversation, right? It wasn't actually seen as a practical mode of implement of implementation. But to your point, I think to be honest, the private sector is not relying on the federal government or they do not feel like it is enough. So I can anticipate Dorsey starting a coalition to a certain extent. I want to point out, though, in the tweet, he said that after they mitigate the pandemic, uh, so emergency uh, crises like that, after those initial donations, then he'll turn his attention to girls' health, education, and UBI. So it's still unclear as to whether things can happen concurrently or perhaps he'll dedicate that billion dollars to frontline workers and, and, and you know, food services versus starting a program like that. 
The fact remains also, he has a full plate as he usually exactly. does. We've already debated, you know, two yeah. CEO rules. I don't know if he has enough spare time. <laughs> exactly. Melody, thank you so much. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.